around for a little while. Uh, Dan Signorini, though, who had a hand in designing the deck, took it to a win just a couple yeah. weeks ago in D.C. Two weeks ago. Two weeks from, from tonight. Two weeks ago. One interesting thing to note about uh, Chris's uh, Team America deck is that it is running two Jaces in the main deck. That's something a little, uh, a little Whereas, different. Whereas uh, some of the other ones are running it in the board. Right. So, uh, and a full set of him to Turox, as yeah. Drew's was only running three. I see. So a little more disruption. Uh, so that, that's what Chris is playing. Um, and now AJ is playing a list that he's kind of been working on, tuning. He's been playing like a show and tell version of it before. And he's playing, it, it was uh, it called No Show, I believe was the name, of the name given to it, Natural Order Show and Tell. But uh, he's cut the show and tell portion of the list and instead is going with a uh, more of just a focused natural order package in his band deck. So there's AJ. It looks like he's uh, curious to see what taking card, a mulligan. Uh, I'm curious to see what card, uh, cards he cut here because he, um, unlike some of the other lists, he's running three days. He's running three stifles as opposed to four stifles. Um, he's running the two Jaces. He's running the full set of him to Turok. Um, and he's... Uh, there was something else I noticed about it that was different. Oh, he's running 23 lands, whereas, uh, like, uh, some people run uh, 21, some people are running 20. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a deck that, uh, there, was, there was a version of the deck Posky was telling me about, like I was telling you, that was mm -hmm. running 19 lands mm -hmm. and uh, two Sensei's tops. Uh, so, a bunch of tiny uh, changes to the deck. Um, I think that the For Him to Turok is, you know, absolutely... Uh, well, you love it, right? I love it. I love it too. Love it. I love it. Love it. I mean, the old, the old adage, "Him, him, I win." Yeah, I almost always want to. Every time see you one. see that, yeah, you just every time we see double him, it's just almost like you just gotta say, "Does does he win?" Right. right. We did see Drew do the him, him, and I believe that was the game he won. Mm -hmm. It's important to note here that uh, AJ seems to be sick. Yeah, um, which you know seems we don't we don't mean like figuratively. We mean right. he's actually not feeling well, and uh, right. you know, still. Here he is in top eight. And he starts Actually, off top with, four. Yeah, absolutely. He starts off with a Savannah into a Noble Hierarch. Right. And Chris Van Meter is going to uh, Polluted Pollute, Delta. Polluted Delta into probably an Underground Sea. Seems likely. And we're correct. Look at that, Twitter. We got something right. Is <laughs> that their Underground River he just fetched? <laughs> I think, it, no, actually, I think that's uh, Badlands. No, oh, must be. Some bad land. No, that was uh, a green white duel, as Kibler pointed out. That was the bad land. That's right. The, the bad lands was a Mitch Hedberg reference, actually. Oh, sorry about that. So, um, Van Meter opens on a ponder off of that underground sea. Now, we know that it's Savannah, but Kibler jokingly said that the bad land was the green white land. Not bad lands but that the green white land was a bad land. That was when we were in DC. So, uh, AJ has a windswept heath and uh, a goif off of his noble hierarch, which is currently a 2-3. Will be a three forward attacks due to the exalted trigger though. Yeah, unless uh, unless they want to add more cards to the graveyard. Which, if we've seen Team America so far this weekend, uh, it's probably going to add some yeah. cards to the graveyard. Maybe not as many as the uh, intuition out of the painter servant decks that just throw <laughs> artifact creatures into the graveyard, <laughs> totally pumping opposing goifs. Absolutely. But uh, Chris has a uh, wasteland on turn two. Yeah, we got to stop being sarcastic about the dual lands because people are not getting our sarcasm. <laughs> people just don't get sarcasm. I don't care if people get my sarcasm or not. It's all good. So uh, he wastes AJ's Savannah. And, uh, Scrub land. Gonna just yeah, keep... and there's a second windswept heath for AJ. And the, uh, the goif comes in for, what is that, two or three? It's a 3-4 it's a three, three, with the exalted trigger. That's right. Yeah, so it's a 2 3 that, that's getting the exalted trigger. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I think one thing that's interesting is that, you know, he's got, he's got wastelands. Now, AJ is probably wisely, I, I'm pretty sure I see a Dryad Arbor in his hand. 
probably wisely holding that back because if he plays that down, he can get that wasteland. Or, or, or actually, no. Why would he wisely hold that back? Right, Sorry, so I'm here comes back. Um, I'm getting reversed here. Here comes Tarmogoyf again for another three. And there's the Dryad Arbor. Actually, he's he's better to he's, run that he's, out. He's daring Chris to, to wasteland it right. because Chris is looks like to little to be a little bit stalled on that. I mean, all he's done is ponder and wasteland. Plus, that'll pump his Goyf. Right, that's true. It'll be a creature in the graveyard to uh, make the Goyf just a bit bigger. This one's Bailey's. This one's Bailey's, but a bit bigger. And we've got a ponder. Yeah, Chris uh, digging through his deck trying to. Trying to sculpt a better hand, I think. I mean, we didn't get a look at his hand, but it just seems like he's not uh, hes not doing very much, and he's under some pressure from that Tarmogoyf. There's a Virgin Catacombs for Chris. Finally, he gets... Uh, Grab his land. And he cracks it to uh, probably get an underground seat here. Kind of depends on Almost. what's in his hand, but underground seat would be a. I think he would need Bayou here because he needs he's no green mana. Right. You're right, there it is, Bayou. I just wasn't sure what he had there sure. available. Uh, if probably he was to cast his own coif. Right, well, I, that's what I wasn't sure if he had it in his hand when he quickly went through his hand, I didn't see a green card. Fair enough. That's why I was thinking maybe the double underground C was the call, but uh, again, I didn't, it was such a quick, right, quick flash, and his, his hand's kind of under his life total sure. over there, so. Uh, well, even if he doesn't have it, he needs it in oh, case he's gonna need the green he's land light as it is, right. but he but does, it does have, have his own goy. Now, uh, obviously AJ's goy trumps Chris's goy. With that exalted trigger, uh -huh. yeah. It's pretty, uh, Pretty important that hierarch right now. Right, well, the double only... black is a given. Uh, with uh, somebody pointed out that it needs double black more, but that's a given with Bayou or Underground Sea. Exactly. But it, uh, the, the Bayou also gives him the single green he needs for Goy. Yep. So um, AJ able to accelerate with uh, with the noble hierarch, and also have a uh, have a bigger Goy win the Goy battles. That card card was pretty good when it was in standard too. Noble hierarch. Remember that? All the way back in the summer? What, which card is good? <laughs> Noble High Rock was good and when it was in standard too. Yeah, it's a pretty good card. Pretty good in extended as well. So, not, AJ, uh, not I mean, quite he, as popular in he should feel pretty safe in the fact that his Goyf is bigger. He's got Tomb, oh, Chris has Tombstalker though. And it looks like he's getting close to the six he needs to, uh, to delve it in. Yeah. And there's a brainstorm off of the hierarch. No, it is starting to get a little bit quieter here, so we might need to stop talking about what's in players' hands. Right. Good call. Good point on, on Twitter. Go for the Threat also wins the Goyf battle. You're saying uh, Goyf dies to Doomblade? Is that what this is? <laughs> Do it's not a good card. Dies to Doomblade. That's right. I will trade you... Uh, a set of Doom Blades for a Tarmogoyf. And you can kill them as many times as you want. Yeah. It's a good trade. People should take them. You're going to take it? No, no. I, uh, I'm, I'm good, though. No, I have... I'm good right now. Fine. I have enough Doom Blades. Also, I have enough Go for the Throats. And you have enough Goyfs, too. Must That's be true. nice. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, AJ... Uh, yeah, like like Joe said, we don't want to really talk about what is being brainstormed at this point because it's getting a little bit quieter. And, and it's, uh, it's still a little. We're, we're, we're reasonable, but I think it's it's one of those things we we do need to watch what we say so so that we can maintain a reasonable volume. We just don't want right. to say anything about uh about any hidden information. Right. If we break the point. habit now, uh, when it actually gets silent in here, you know, we won't be uh, we won't screw anything up for the players. Right. You certainly don't want to affect the match at all. So just pretend you're standing over the table and you can't see what's in their hands. <laughs> Fair enough. Or if you can see it, you know, shout yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. Don't shout, it out, shout it out in your own living room. Yeah, yeah shout it out just at don't home. wake up the neighbors. 
Hope we didn't wake the neighbors up. That was that was a, that was the uh, reference there. The, it's an old reference set. Was it the Jonathan? What, I forgot the guy. Jonathan name. Ross. Yeah. So he comes in with the uh, with, with the goif here. With the bigger goif, and um, still got those windswept heats, kind of just waiting there to get him get whatever he decides he needs. And look, which looks like he may be actually making that decision now. At least for one of them. Certainly considering it. Maybe he doesn't want Chris to know what he needs until he needs it. You know what I mean? Until he absolutely needs it. Hides information. It seems like a good idea. Hey, somebody said I should make a Doomblade guy plug from Twitter. And I just responded to it. No plug for him because he's been inactive for months. He has, hasn't he? Yeah, but you had to say something. Sorry. <laughs> That's because Gopher the Throat made him a sad panda. Fair enough. There's another Goyf on AJ's side. Yeah, those, uh, although the, <laughs> he can't swing with both Goyfs and expect to win the, uh, the Goyf no, battle. No, but he can swing with one and hold the other one back to... Absolutely. No, it's I'm, pretty awesome. Yeah, he's, he's got a nice setup there. Just saying, uh, I'm pretty much just saying that that's what he should be doing is right. he wants to win the Goyf battle swing with one for the uh, Exalted trigger and have one chilling out. But I can win the oh. Goyf war with, uh, with Sword to Plowshares just as well. I need to resolve first, but... That's true. You know that he, okay. He's, yeah. win, he's winning the Goyf battle anyway right now with two Goyfs and an Exalted trigger. Uh, and now the he's just that resolves. So he says, "Here, have some life. Have five life." Yeah, there seems to be very little way for him to get out of he this predicament. He right needs now. engineered explosives. Right. As being pointed out a little bit on Twitter, mm -hmm. Gabe Lanciano always uh, uh, there to uh, point out some interesting strategy. Except for when he wasn't there. Except for when he wasn't right. <laughs> Never mind, he needs a land board, he says. <laughs> well, we know that there's a Tomb Stalker, so that'll be relevant. Helps uh, sh possibly, or helps partly shrink those goifs, possibly. I, I can't see exactly what's in AJ's graveyard. I don't know how big of an effect that Tomb Stalker's delve had on uh, AJ's Tarmogoyfs, but... He's got a pretty heavy glare there. Can we get a confirmation yeah. on the Tarmogoyfs power toughness right now? Rashad to the uh, walkie-talkie. And he taps four, which is just a, looks like maybe a green, well, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> it's a two, three goif. Or the goif's a two, three. It's okay. shrunk considerably. Yeah. Team Stalker uh, over there, looking a bit threatening. Looks like AJ's trying to Figure out make up his mind yeah, about what exactly he wants to do here. As much as I wanted to say what was in his hand, <laughs> I stopped myself. I had to stop myself too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Fauna Shaman from AJ. Fauna Shaman's a really interesting card in AJ's deck because, I mean, it, it's only one of itself, but um, it can search up a ton of one ofs in his deck. Right on. Or, and especially in his sideboard, too. Chris in a uh, pretty bad position at this point, but that uh, the Tomb Stalker's at least holding off those goys for the moment. Providing, uh, providing him a little security. So, uh, mm. 
hard to say what you do here. Like, you're on the back foot. You want something like engineered explosives to destroy those goifs and the uh, fauna shaman. Seems like a decent plan. Uh, you know, won't get rid of the dryad arbor or the uh, noble hierarch, but uh, you're at 11 life at the moment. Seems like that would, I mean, that would be the play if, if he has access to engineered explosives at the moment. I feel like that's would be, that would be a great, great call. Now, we don't know what AJ has, if he's got uh, counter magic to deal with that. Yeah, that's right, he can't actually, can't actually wipe everything this turn. Because he needs to, he needs another land to uh, be able to sacrifice it. But he can at least, well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Really doesn't look good for him. I mean, the Tombstalker can prevent something. So there's a Sylvan Library gonna help him, hopefully, draw into some cards. Uh, hopefully, draw into some lands. That is, yeah, it's definitely gonna help him draw some cards. Right, That's how it works. He really needs the land. Those goifs aren't so big, so like, here's the thing, maybe, I wonder if uh, playing the explosives would still have been a better idea just to set it up for next turn. You know what I mean? Like, if, then again, next turn, if he draws into a land, he can explosives, he can play and bust the explosives in the same turn. So. Right. Has or not, Chris? <laughs> what? Does he, does he have it? Okay, here comes natural order. All right, this could be uh, this could be big right here, or at least what uh, what AJ gets could be big. Absolutely, it could be very big. It's likely to be pretty big. I mean, he quite quite a lot bigger than the Dryad Arbor that he uh, <laughs> that he just sacrificed. True. I would expect him to get something like Progenitus. And we'll see if I was correct. I am. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but oversized cards aren't legal. That's right. That is not as b not any bigger than the rest of the cards. We're just uh, very true. Just to clarify that. But its power and toughness are quite the size, quite the sizable uh, numbers there. And it does have protection from everything. That's everything. Now, uh, I don't know that Chris really can do anything at this point. He was already in a bad position. And that bad position got exponentially worse with that progenitus hitting play. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, he's going to scoop he, he agrees, I think. Yeah. And uh, says, let's, let's try a game two, and maybe he can... Uh, Maybe he can provide a little more disruption Absolutely. to AJ's plan. So anybody uh, just joining us, I'm Joey Pasco here with Big Head Joe. We're in the booth for SCG Live covering the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Memphis, Tennessee. We're, uh, we're here in the semifinals of the Legacy portion. We're having an awesome day watching Legacy Magic and uh, watching Chris Van Meter play at Team America against AJ Soccer playing Natural Order Bant. Team America has performed really well today. <clears throat> Absolutely. So, uh, speaking of which, we have some uh, we have some premium to give away, and the question we're gonna we're gonna have is, who piloted Team America to its most recent legacy finish just a couple weeks ago, just within the last few weeks? To the legacy win. Right. To the legacy top legacy win in uh, the StarCityGames.com Open Series. So I will uh, tweet that, and the uh, the hashtag for that is SCG Premium. Tweet the answer at SCG at SCG Live with the hashtag SCG Premium, and uh, you can potentially win up to six months, or not up to six months. You can potentially win six months of free premium. We will be giving away twelve months of premium in the finals, uh, which are coming up pretty soon. So. Any reports from the other match? We're gonna find out the status of the. Uh, other semifinal match between Alex Bertoncini and Lucas Parson. Hey, 
AJ has been an advocate of the natural order for a, for a while. So the game, game three is going on right now between Alex and Lucas. Lucas playing uh, an affinity lift mm -hmm. uh, against Alex's trademark merfolk lift. Mm -hmm. They're the blue jund, as far as he's concerned. <laughs> uh, I just I just made that up. I'm not sure if that's something he would actually say, but he did quite like the jund deck last season. Did very well well with it. That was where I feel you know that was where I first heard of Alex Bertoncini was from right. his uh, his finishes in the Star City Open Series with jund. And uh, obviously jund rotates out. He switches over to. Uh, a different red-green aggro build, adding some blue instead of black, and uh, goes with the rug plan and loves that deck. And uh, but for Legacy, his old standby is Merfolk, and that's that's a deck that doesn't uh, it's unlikely to rotate from Legacy anytime soon, considering that Legacy doesn't rotate. Correct. Thank you for that confirmation. <laughs> Thank you for. Thanking me for my confirmation. Absolutely, anytime, buddy. So, uh, yeah, AJ now uh, focusing on this match. AJ has been working on natural order combo decks uh, for quite a while. He's yeah. been tuning this a little bit uh, here and there. He was playing a show and tell version uh, last few events, and here he is. He's cut the show and tells, made uh, made quite a few changes, and. Uh, Right now, he's up a game in the semifinals, possibly heading to the finals if he can uh, if he can win one more game against Chris Van Meter. We're getting the winner of the draft open here, getting his picture taken. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want this picture. Don't look confusing. Don't look confused. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Hayashi taking pictures. That's terrible. Trying to take the trophy shot here. Don't do it. I'm blinking, right? Congratulations. Thank you. All right, so uh, you guys, AJ has presented his deck, and uh, Chris has as well. They're uh, drawing their seven. They're going to take a look and see if it's. Uh, you know, see if their openers are worth keeping. Come on, guys, no mulligans. Let's both start this off with uh, some good, good hands. We want to see some good magic. Somebody asked on Twitter why uh, the Star City Opens don't feature block constructed. Tournament. Because there's only two days every weekend. That's there's only true. two days on the weekend, right? Because we have standard, like, we have legacy. Like one, I mean, like, what, is Block Constructed a PTQ format right now? No, I mean, right now it's extended. I mean, Is it at ever? All? Uh, I think occasionally it is. So, uh, both guys keep, which is great. Chris leads off with a ponder. Uh, sculpting his hand. Possibly trying to... Uh, Get a little more disruption this time for AJ. The last last game he just really didn't have much to uh, much to stop AJ from beating down with Tarmogoyfs. Absolutely. And uh, eventually Progenitus. So AJ starts right off with a Green Sun Zenith for zero. Uh, any guesses as to which Dryad Arbor he's getting here? Uh. <laughs> There's a Dryad Arbor <laughs> off of the Green Sun Zenith. It's one of the uh, more, I mean, Green Sun Zenith is, is showing itself to be quite a versatile card in Legacy. Okay, and Chris Van Meter plays a Tarmogoyf and passes back to AJ. Yeah, I mean, Zenith in, in AJ's deck in particular, uh, it's strong because just, just right there, that play being able to accelerate with it, right. you know, he just, he just broke serve. He's now on the play, essentially, yeah. you know? Um, gets an extra land drop and uh, also has a target for his natural order. Absolutely. And as we saw, that's exactly what happened uh, last game was he used natural order to sacrifice Dryad Arbor to search for Progenitus mm -hmm. and uh, you know AJ 
fixing to do something very similar right now. Uh, and maybe not this turn, obviously, but coming up pretty soon, he's just building that uh, scenario. He's attempting to. But he has to uh, has to worry a little bit about that timer wife now. That timer wife's not too big. It's a two three at the moment. It looks like land and uh, sorcery in the graveyard. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's that? Oh, Burton Cheney won. So, so Burton Cheney taking the Merfolk deck to the finals. Alex Burton Cheney is going to the finals. Going to the finals of the Legacy. So we're going to find out who his opponent is out of these two guys. So now there is an instant in the graveyard, so that Goyf got a little bit bigger, thanks to AJ's brainstorm. And down comes a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, and, uh... Beautiful, unhinged island. <clears throat> sure as, is. As much as I love that one, I'm really getting to be partial to the uh, unglued islands. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think I'm actually going to grab some uh, when I get home. I'm going to see if I can get a couple of those for my legacy deck. They appear pretty old school. It's, yeah. They feel, they feel very old school. Yeah. I, I like it. I don't think I cared for them before, but I don't know. I guess seeing them played so much, like Cherry T's rocking those islands. and Yeah. Not just not just Jerry T, but uh, kind of making me like those. I think one of my favorite lands ever is uh, our foil unhinged swamps. Yeah, they, they look, look pretty amazing. Nice. Yeah. I want to get those for my uh, mono black EDH deck. It's gonna take a while. So uh, it looks like at, at the end of AJ's turn, I believe Chris has uh, played the brainstorm. Jerry's fault. Yeah, Bryce. 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 Yeah. Making fun of me, saying it's Jerry's fault that I uh, that I want to play those islands, and I beat him to that explanation. But it's not, I don't think it's just because of Jerry, because I've been seeing them for weeks now. Anyway, there goes uh, Chris. Oh, so he brainstormed on his own turn. Sorry, I thought that was the end of uh, AJ's turn, but uh, actually it makes no sense because the uh, the lands were tapped for the Tarmogoyf at the end of AJ's <laughs> turn. Sorry about that. It's okay. Alex Bertoncini also reaches level six dun, with his. Dun, uh, dun, 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 yeah, I still thought I heard the Final Fantasy music. <laughs> he levels up. So in with the Tarmogoyf for Chris, and uh, knocks AJ from 19 to 16. Yep. Alright. Yeah, he, he did board in the cold eyed Selkie. I can see it there. I can say that because people are being really loud. <laughs> so I can definitely tell you that. Seems like it might just. Or, I mean, I guess he could take out the Goyf. But. You could also drop it down. It's just gonna swords the goy. We're gonna see if that resolves, yeah. obviously. Uh, spell pierce is coming down. So spell pierce for the uh, for the swords to plowshares, and uh, AJ Pays looks like he's going to pay. At least, kind of uh, considering it, started to. Uh, you know, he's got some lands sideways there, but hasn't taken his hand off those lands. Now he, he says, "Okay, yes, I will pay." It's kind of like in chess, like still have my finger on the piece. Yeah, exactly. So he pays, and uh, Goyf hits the yard. Actually, doesn't hit the yard. Just completely skips the yard and is. Does not pass go, does not collect $200. Sure does. So it's directly to jail. Removed from the game, actually. <laughs> Straight to exile. Absolutely. Decided it wanted to be uh, f doing some uh, farming duties instead of battling with, uh, with swords. So <laughs> AJ fetches up a tropical island. Passes with the island and the tropical island off. Yeah. And so there's a ponder for uh, Van Meter, who uh, 
Again, seems a little landlight, and there's a, you know, AJ realizing this spell pierces the ponder. And it's odd, too, because I pointed out that he uh, is running 23 lands in which this is a little list, more than which is higher than uh, most of the uh, yeah. lists that we've seen. We've seen more ponders from Chris than we've seen lands. I mean, that's the th he just, you know, the first ponder was yeah. spell pierced, and now he uh, went with a second ponder, which, you know, he just really just needs to dig, and now he's shuffling. Stops here. Clearly, he's <laughs> not getting what he needs at the top. <laughs> and there's a land. He's got a bayou. Now AJ has uh, an opportunity to maybe get some uh, get some more pressure down, or potentially hit his uh, natural order combo. Certainly could. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive to see AJ battle through uh, his, his illness, right. like he is right now. Right. Well, you know, as we were saying earlier, Kibler was sick with strep throat when he made the top eight of uh, GP Denver. That's right. And. Uh, Edgar Flores top eight two consecutive tournaments this weekend on literally like probably six hours sleep in four days. Yeah. So you know apparently this is what it takes to be a magic player. <laughs> this is this is this is the uh, <coughs> this is the difference. Now, ob obviously I'm kidding, but yeah, it's it really is it's pretty crazy that uh, these guys perform well when they're kind of uh, under some sort of duress. Yeah, we don't want to turn our, no pun intended, every pun intended. Um, yeah. so we don't There's three mana to turn for the hypochondria, hypochondriacs. Cold Eye Selkie. I keep looking at that because the art is so dark on Cold Eye Selkie. Well, I, am, I think it's a foil, So that's a foil. It's yeah. making a little, little make, make it, it more darker. difficult. But even earlier when uh, when it was played, again, uh, Nick, Nick Spagnuolo played it, I was trying to figure out what it was. Like from from here, it almost just looks like a little person on a black it looks, background. Kind of looks like Oracle of Moldiah, to be honest. To me, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> but he tapped three for it, so right. I, I knew it was, and then I also didn't think it was in the list. Yeah, obviously, we have the list. Yeah. It's obviously not playable. And then I realized it was Cold Eye Selkie. So, now we saw how <clears throat> Selkie combined with Hierarch just buried uh, Ben Weinberg in card advantage. Sure did. Uh, when Spagnolo had that in play, so AJ is. Uh, set up to do similar damage here. Uh, Cold Eye Selkie has Island Walk and draws cards for each damage it deals. So it's only a 1-1, one, one, but when it swings with that Hierarch uh, in play, it gets that, that trigger, that Exalted trigger. So uh, connecting with Chris Van Meter's life total will also draw AJ two cards. That's huge. Yeah. It's huge when you're playing against a deck that's trying to play him to Turox on you. Yeah, basically you just unhim every turn. Yeah. And uh, Chris hasn't even himmed yet. <laughs> Speak of the devil, there's him to Turok. So uh, AJ going with the uh, brainstorm to protect some of his hands. Or deciding. just to see what he's got. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he decides what he doesn't mind losing and what he wants to keep. He sets it up. And it says here, yeah, you hit randomly the last two cards in my hand. Mm -hmm. Tropical Island and something else. And I think it was just two lands. I think it was two lands as well. And now I think he has the uh, natural order. I think he does too. So uh, he's going to un him here, right? Un him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, uh, so he top decks <clears throat> one of the cards he put back and gets another two here. There's one, there's two, and uh, mm -hmm. there is the card we did think we saw, and there it is, so. Here comes uh, some action. Chris, I think, <laughs> I think he may suspect the situation. <laughs> Seems like a pretty smart guy. Kind of knows what's going on here. Yep. <clears throat> so there's four mana in AJ's pool. Nice. <clears throat> Somebody was saying that the Selkie looks like Consume Spirit. 
Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely not consumed spirit. Right. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, of course. Fair enough. Yeah, I like the, uh, the Elspeth. Elf, Elspeth, uh, <laughs> not uh, Elspeth Knight Errant. Jump a, uh, jump a Selkie. And that's quite a lot. Quite a lot of cards there. Absolutely. It's at least four, unless you have an Exalted Trigger. Hmm. So he, uh, okay. AJ untaps and just passes the turn. All right. Just uh, figured it was content to unhim himself there. <clears throat> so it seems like okay, so Chris drops a Tarmogoyf, and the Tarmogoyf can't block the cold eyed Selkie, but it can crack back, which could uh, put some pressure on AJ to. Uh, is that match? No. Oh, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get Alex in the uh, in the booth real quick. Uh, Tarbogoyf is uh, currently a three four, and uh, Tombstalker comes down as well, um, possibly keeping we got uh, new our newest uh, level six. Ooh, feels good. Star City Games Players yes. Club. You know, I like Jerry Thompson and all, but he uh, did not need to go surpass me last yesterday without a fight, you know? There you go. So this is game two here. AJ is up a game? Yeah. Is that Cold Eye Silky? Yes, it is. A AJ seems to be in a pretty good position here. Let's try not to comment on what's in their hands just because it's pretty quiet in the room. Okay. Uh, but let's just say that uh, sure. if you take a look, you will see that there's a... Um, Cold Eye Silky Noble High. He's in a pretty good position. Let's get a dry driver. <laughs> The deck's pretty powerful that AJ's playing because it's any of its fetch lands can turn into chump blockers. Yeah. Any of them. It's 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 pretty crazy. Yeah. So AJ has not lost uh he lost one match on the day. He lost to Edgar. That's right. <laughs> hmm. Uh Gavin just posted that Selkie plus sword of uh missing it. it's feast and feast famine. famine. Yeah, it's pretty gross too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Wow. And it's a kill with waves of aggression. Mm hmm. <laughs> That's fun. Just take an extra turn. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, very quiet in here. There are very few people left. But, uh. I guess to draw two. More magic to be played. Yeah, AJ, this fight, uh. You know, Chris is, uh. Tombstalker and Goyf, AJ seems to mm -hmm. be in a really good position here. That's true, yeah. So he has natural order right now? Seems that way. Oh boy. And the rich get richer. <laughs> of course he's been he's, he tapped he tapped that those four mana last turn too and then untapped him in the past, so who knows? <laughs> AJ's gonna go for it, because he's a smart player and he sees that he's gonna do it. Because Chris has Force of Will and Consuming Vapors. So there's a Progenitus. And that is the face of a man who is about to get attacked by Progenitus. <laughs> Not now, but soon. For, for sure, very soon. Very soon. Uh, unless he does something immediately to deal with it, yeah. of course. And it's uh, interesting because he has a Consuming Vapors, so maybe he can buy enough time to survive two hits from Progenitus. It's possible. Because he needs to hit with that Tomb Stalker three times. True. Was there a way for him to play the Tomb Stalker last turn? Or uh, I think he did play it last no, turn. No, I'm, I'm sorry, the turn before. Like, I, did he immediately play the Tomb Stalker as soon as he could play it? I, I, don't, I don't know if he had it in his hand. Okay. Um, and we didn't comment, so... Okay. Um. Oh, AJ has a sword, so, so that is... That's going to be pretty brutal. Almost all the hope lost there. Mm -hmm. Well, now he gets about two hits from Progenitus. Nope, he can't. 11 and 11. So he that's, cannot that's true. <laughs> he cannot that's very true. Two hits from I guess the Consuming Vapors does allow that, but it does not look very good for Chris here. Yeah, 
I didn't have the chance to talk with AJ yet about like how that matchup worked, how his deck would fare against Team America, but it looks like it's doing pretty good. Yeah, it I looks mean, like it's all right against it. <clears throat> There's the consuming vapors. So no, I would not. I would sacrifice the dry arbor if I was AJ. Okay, yeah. right? Isn't that just strictly better? Dry arbor does not have exalted. It's True. I mean, again, like you said, it was a two-turn clock with. Uh, well, not anymore block. because he gains the light. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's so, true. So, but okay. I mean, like, just saying. Yeah. If you drew another noble higher, then it would be a two-turn clock. Right. But of course, that is going to uh, rebound. Yep. So he will gain a little more life as well. And he, maybe he's just saving the arbor. Maybe he wants to use the arbor this turn. Sure. Maybe. Although. And not to mention, like the the arbor the. Yeah. I don't know. I think I would have sacked the Arbor, but like I said, AJ plays very tight. He's not someone who just been the wrong one for no reason. Maybe he was thinking about it. Sure. He must have had a reason for it. AJ plays very tight magic. So there comes Sower of Temptation. And that card is also in my deck. It's very good. And that's the yeah. game. Wow. AJ takes it 2-0. All right. So I will be uh, making my leave now. We will see you on the other side of the camera. Absolutely. Congratulations again for the